This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, it's a great publishing day here at Author You, your guide to book publishing. And with me is someone who we haven't had on the show for a long, long, long time. But it's a topic, it's an element that is essential, it's critical, and every author needs it. It's called a printer. So with me today is going to be Sandy Gould, who is with Color House Graphics, one of my preferred. She is a the... Uh, uh, one of the sales managers there, and I would say, mm, and maybe she'll correct me, there's around 35 book manufacturers in North America right now in that ballpark. It could be a few more, it could be a few less. I know there's been some mergers over the past year, and book manufacturers are individuals in companies that can actually produce your book. We're talking about printing, binding, um, you, you know, all the goodies that come into effect. Uh, it is, there are variables in here, but they really do, can do what I call the whole enchilada instead of piecemealing a book out every which way and having it done. So Sandy and I are going to be really diving in to what this is all about and how you can really work effectively with a book printer no matter where you are. She's the, she has a passion for helping indie book publishers and authors see their creative vision and become a reality in the most straightforward and cost-effective way. Having spent most of her over 20-year career in the printing and book manufacturing industry, she's able to apply a combination of the technical skills that she has and the book publishing expertise to really deliver the effective results. And one of the things that I love when you're really working with someone who has 20 years is when an author shows them maybe a working cover, they will come up with ideas of how you can enhance it and make it really a standalone. So customized that, that anyone would think it would come off of New York with the skills and the techniques that they can do. Now we're assuming we have, you have a great design as well, but Sandy, welcome to author you. Thanks, Judith. It's good to be here. I appreciate you having me. And I love talking about books, especially printing books, but books in general are yep. wonderful. So I'm happy to be here. You know, Sandy, before we jump into some of this, tell me a little bit about the 20 years um, that you have, because I think it's really, uh, really a bonus when you don't have someone who's green. Um, just they're just take their order takers where you bring a lot more to the party. Well, yeah, I started my printing career in commercial printing. I worked for the company that made the Gerber labels, the baby oh. food labels. And um, that's where I got my feet wet, where I, where I learned mm-hmm. the ins and outs of printing. And back then, everybody used film. It was a whole different ballpark than it is now. It was very expensive to make corrections. There was a big upfront cost when you um, made the film and plates. And now that we're all digital, everything is computer to plate, so there's less of that upfront cost. So so printing has really come down uh, in price, and it's much faster than it ever was. So it's a good time to be in print. You know, I um, when I moved, I moved a couple of years ago, and I had some of my old plates. Uh, and I, <laughs> I, I, I wish I had kept them to show people what they looked like. You know, just to kind of like a pass around when they ooh ah uh, type thing <laughs> when right. when when we have those, but it that was well, the old the, days. Yeah, back in the old days, the plates were very very thick and very heavy and very expensive. And when you when you printed something, you labeled them and stored them in a warehouse. Right now, the plates are are much less expensive. They're 
thinner and flimsier and a little more fragile. So we don't hang plates anymore. We use fresh plates. We recycle the materials and so that they go back into other things, but we make fresh plates whenever we do a reprint. Oh, so, so you don't, you really don't store them for six months or so to see if something gets back to print right away or you do a fresh set every time you go to print? We do a fresh set every time. That way, if you want to update your print history or make any, any changes, it's easy to do and um, it's effortless. You know, I, lo I, I am so glad you said that, Sandy, because that for those of you who do go back to print, now we're not, we're not talking print on demand. We're talking about doing a print run um, that, that you have a first printing. And if you look on a copyright page of a traditionally published book, often you'll see numbers like 10987654321 um, on it. And when the one is there, that means the first printing. When it's the, the one is gone, it's two. That's the second printing. When the second one and two is gone, we're at the third printing. Um, at least that's the way they used to do it when I published with New York. Um, and and we'll see that quite a bit. And mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't know what that means, but um, it looks when when new authors are wondering how to set up their copyright page, I often refer them to books in their own library to kind of. Mm -hmm. um, copy that format and um, they often put that on there may not know what it means but um, it, it looks professional and it looks like it's been done by a bigger print house so yeah which, which actually for all of us indies is a good idea I mean it, it is set, you know a little bit more separation from the crowd in that process so I like that in that well let's start start up here um what is before i know that you and i talked about a couple of questions we wanted to go through but i always love to ask this um especially for, with printing what are the big changes that you have seen i mean you've got a lot of years behind you um plates no no no, no more the big <laughs> uh, uh, they were at least an eighth inch thick at least an eight inch thick plates um that we have and Right now, now we don't use film and everything is, is computer to plate. So we use a PDF file, pull up your file when the proof is approved and we send that image over to the plate, setter, plate maker and it is um, laser, laser etched and um, it comes, it's all automatic. It, it comes right out of the plate maker and then it will go to the press, get wrapped around the cylinder and that's where your books are printed. But um, corrections are much easier to make now because there's no film. We can just change it on the screen and send the file over and make a new plate. Plates are cheaper now. Um, it's it's a it's easy way to update your files. Uh, if you anything changes, if you've got a, a non-fiction book and something gets updated and you need to change it, then that's very easy to do. But it's always a good idea to talk to your printer ahead of time. When you're, whether you're going to reprint or you have a new project because you may have an idea in your head and, and we may be able to help you with a more practical way to make that same look on your cover or on the interior. And um, I just really love to talk to authors and publishers way ahead of time. And you may talk to several printers but and find the best fit, the one that you connect with and feel most comfortable with. But I like to do that because then we can talk about schedule, when you need your books in hand, um, how soon you should have your file to the printer, if you need to have your books by your book signing on such and such a date. Um, there's, we can talk about paper and different things to do with your cover. Um, one of the other changes you asked about, I'm sorry I got up track, but one of the other things is now that we, we can do raised UV, so that it looks like it looks like it's embossed and um, UV spot UV coated, and yeah. it's really just a raised varnish. But it looks beautiful and it's geared towards smaller quantities, so you don't have to have 500 or a thousand bucks to have that nice look. Ooh, well, for everyone, I have to tell you that's a yummers. I'm I'm thinking yummers as she said that. Um, and I and I in disclaimer, um, I've been honored to have Color House Printing uh, print a few of my books, and 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 just what Sandy was talking about, 
that I, I I don't know if before you were there, but when I worked directly with Phil Knight, who I think now is what the overall general manager, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Phil came up with an idea because I had a very expensive treatment on one of my books because I would do French collapse and that it, it was a raised embossed and then it had um, a foil coat on top of it. Bill came back to me when we went back to reprint and he says, you know, there's a way that we could do this and save probably a dollar a book on printing. And by gosh, that's what we did. And I, I so appreciated that for, for you to bring it up. Um, and, and, you know, I didn't know that that technique was there. So now when you're telling me that you can do a, a, a spot coating, the UV coating, and with extra varnish, it has an embossing feel Holy moly, everybody! That is fabulous. And and what kind of cost? What kind of cost? Because although these are options, what kind of cost? What that increase on a on a book? It's hard to say because it depends on the coverage and it depends on how many copies. But it is cheaper than buying an embossing die and yeah. going through a separate um, setup and everything for the uh, raised um, embossed area. So it is a cheaper option, but it, there are variables, so it's hard to say how much it would it would increase cost, but it is quite a bit less than an embossing dye, which is really a male and female dye, so you've really got two dyes. Yeah. So I love the idea. Dyes are expensive. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I think I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm excited. <laughs> I will get a bit on that. I have a new book coming. <laughs> so. Oh, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> This is my own book um, that I, I have just finished, finished, and I'm waiting for the last edit to come in on When God Says No. So I think that you, your, your firm would love it. So we're going to take a quick break. With me is Sandy Gould. We're talking about how to put your book cover and your interior with the best foot forward. We'll be right back. Is there a book in you or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author You is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoryou.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? 
Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. What's so important is that whoever you print with better snap, crack, and pop. It better be sharp. It better not be blurred. You better not be looking at wet pages, which, uh, which what happens when a page is, well, I, maybe we, we ought to tell our guest, have our guest, Sandy Gould, who is the, um, uh, the direct sales manager at Color House Graphics, which is located in Michigan. When, when papers are wet, Sandy, and they bind the book, what happens? Oh, it's bad things. Bad things. Bad things. Bad things. Very bad things. Bad things. <laughs> we we let our paper everything dry before it even hits the folder and before it hits the binder because if the ink is wet when it goes through our folders, those run very quickly, mm-hmm. and um, we could get um, marking, mm-hmm. and we don't like that. That's bad. Nobody likes that. So um, we're always very careful. There are different things, settings we can put on the press to make sure that 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 doesn't come out too wet. But we do let it dry before we do anything with it. Yeah. And and what also happens, if you've ever seen a book, opened a book, and you see the paper wavy or has a little wrinkle in it, that usually means it's been bound wet. Well, it also can mean that it was stored in a very humid um, mm. area where there's a lot of moisture in the air because the binding is is secure and the the moisture goes in one side of the paper and can't come out because of the glue barrier. Mm-hmm. So that's what causes it to wave. Mm. So in the summertime when it's really humid, sometimes we have issues with that and we have to be very careful to, I mean, we have very sensitive um, moisture settings in our air to make the um, paper behave how we want it to behave and to make sure that the waviness um, doesn't happen. But that can happen. And, you know, if you leave a book in your car in the middle of the summer when it's very humid, um, the covers can flip like a 60s hairdo. And if you bring it inside and for a couple of days, then they usually settle down and, and go back to how they normally would be. But and, but it happens. It does happen. It, it, it's the atmosphere, and, you know, we try and do our best to alleviate that, but we just, you know, do our, our best to make sure that, that it's good when it leaves our, our building and it should be good when it arrives at our customers' addresses. Exactly. Well, what Sandy and I wanted to go over um, in, on this uh, particular podcast was that the ways that you can speed up your printing for your the book you currently work on or the reprint of the book you're thinking about or your next book as you're going on. So, Sandy, I guess the first question I want to throw at you is an easily a, a gentle toss is what what do you wish um, that authors, when they contact you, if they do it directly, um, or they're they're thinking of printing, would ask, and they don't. Um, mm. Well, <laughs> what I wish they would ask, well, I, it's more what I wish they would tell me. 
what I wish they would tell me is mm -hmm. if they have a deadline, mm -hmm. um, if they need their books by a certain date and, and they have, you know, a book signing set up or whatever uh, events they might have, I'd love to know that ahead of time. Even if you think that it's, oh, we've got a whole month, there's no way it's going to come into play. I'll just keep that to myself. No, please tell me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's good to know that. And um, it's good to know if there are any concerns like um, your last printer, the spine wasn't centered, the spine copy wasn't centered and it looked funny and you're really worried about that. I mean, that's actually happened and I've been out on our binder I've, with my phone. I took a picture of the spine perfectly centered and sent it to the author and she was very pleased and could then mm -hmm. breathe a sigh of relief that her books were going to look how she expected. Mm -hmm. um, if you have file trouble, if you don't know if you've got good files and you're struggling with word or whatever um let me know and i will direct you to somebody that can get a prepare a bulletproof file for you i feel so bad when authors try and cut corners and save money by trying to do them do uh, file prep themselves me too. they have a friend whose son friend, friend from the church whose son who knows computers exactly. can do it for them yeah it's no faster and and it, it, it just, it, it wastes time and money. And anytime you have bad files and we have to fix things, then those charges, you know, there are charges associated with that. So please, please, please use a good book designer, cover designer, somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, and I have uh, several very trusted, tried and true people that I can refer authors and publishers to if they need that kind of help. And editors, please use a good editor. Um, I've seen things come through with grammatical errors and, you know, sometimes people want to know about it and sometimes they get defensive and don't want to know about it. So it's kind of a, a fine line to, to tread, but it, it makes your book look and read more professionally. And there are a lot of books out there. And um, somebody's going to pick up your book and compare it to the book next to it. You want yours to shine through. And um, well, a good editor yeah. based on correction costs. Um, so that's that's really important. And I would I would I love for my customers to use a good editor. Well, I, I, you know, from from my side of it, um, I know that when we're sending stuff out to printers when we're bidding on projects and things that the books have, have been edited, they absolutely are done by professional book designers. Um, and actually, I insist on the book designer uploading it to the printer. Because, the, you you know, my feeling is there you have the same jargon in the language, and if, some, if the file is, is skewed a little bit, um, then we need to, um, uh, you can fix it. And, and they can fix it and get the right files to you. And, and sometimes we do find something and that we have to ask the printer, do you want a whole file again or do you want the page that needs to be replaced? Do you have any feelings about that, Sandy? Um, you know, corrections happen. And, yes. and we even see it for uh, in our own marketing materials that we, we print ourselves. We can have five people look at it and everybody will miss it, but the sixth person will see something that needs to be fixed. So let's I look know. at that. Corrections happen. Um, sometimes it's better if you have a whole lot of pages. Let's say your page numbers ended up all being in the gutter or something weird that, that affects all the pages, like the running heads or something, then we would want a whole new file. But if you just have a couple of pages that need to be corrected, just send us those pages. It's, it's easier just to process those corrections and replace them in the existing PDF than starting from scratch. S Sandy, what is, what's the estimate cost if you do have to make um, a correction? And here's, I'll, I'll tell you what I have told my authors when, first of all, when they get the proof back, you know, the, from the printer, that I, I, whatever, I don't care what day it is, that they are instructed to cancel everything the next day. Um, because I expect them to turn it around in 24 hours. That that's oh, my that's that is my expectation, and <laughs> because well, I know I'll tell you why. Yeah, we have a very complex schedule with many different machines and many many titles, 
that all have to come together at once. And if you're going to take a whole week to look yeah. at the proof, and sometimes people take that long, I want yep. to know ahead of time so that I can adjust our schedule and move something into that slot instead of each day having the schedule people knocking on my door saying, what's up with this title? Are we going to get mm -hmm. approval? You know, because uh, printing schedules are very, I mean, nobody wants their book to be late. So we want, we don't want to hold up anything because somebody needs to take extra time. We just want to know ahead of time mm -hmm. if that's what you need. Yeah, heads up for everyone listening in. It's really important to understand that, that um, this is this becomes a priority. And also, when you get that proof, you're not rewriting. This is the other thing that has made me cuckoo. You are not rewriting. Um, if you see a glaring error that you need to fix, for heaven's sakes, you get it fixed. But, you know, if it's something that it's a, it's bugs you, but it probably is not going to bug other people, I would say it's called next. The next reprint you do is when you can go ahead and fix it because you're already queued up in this deal. And um, like, and I've seen horrendous delays, Sandy, when people have decided, oh, I need to substitute some stuff in and I need to do this and I want to move this picture to the front. It's just stunning to me. Right. And I've even had people who get their proof and not understand Mm -hmm. what the purpose of a proof is and use it for proofreading at that point and then have all yeah. kinds of corrections. But no, your your file should be proofread and ready to press the print button and uh -huh. corrections should be something that is a glaring error, like you said, that has to be fixed, like a name misspelling or something or grammatical error that that would that would make your book seem, you know, less professional. Something that has to be fixed. And otherwise <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. fingernails going down the chalkboard <laughs> otherwise you let it go and and go to the next and and move on with that I, but it, i see a lot of first-time authors that this is a, a work that they've had in the works for a long time and they finesse it to death where they they change things and change fonts and you know it's never going to be more perfect than it is just go with it and then use feedback to make changes on the next print run. Well, and, and you know, the other thing is we're, we're coming up to our next break here, but the one, one thing that I see repeatedly is that once they start tinkering a lot, they make more mistakes. It compounds it and they're better to leave it alone. With that, we're going to be right back with me as Sandy Gould from Color House Graphics. And we're talking about how to make your printed book look sensational. <laughs> is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged event. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. I don't know if any of you are like me, but I am old fashioned that even though I do audiobooks for all my books, I do ebooks for all my books. But I love print books. I love the feel. I love the look. I love the smell. I love to just open them. I like to carry them. I like to look at them. Um, I love books. So that if I have one addiction, it's a printed book. So what is so important about the discussion we're having is how important it is to have uh, your book. And I think that I don't care if, you, if you're an ebook reader, you still should have a printed book. And um, even even thinking about a short run. And one of the things that Sandy told me about that Color House Graphics was doing was a, a special, like a pre-short run. What did you call it, Sandy? Oh, um, I don't know if there's a room, if there's a name for it, but I, I noticed a lot of authors order shorter runs to start, like mm-hmm. 100 copies, and um, use those for marketing and for sales and use that to build an audience for a bigger run, maybe a hardcover run, maybe something special that uh, like a special edition or something with maybe some embellishments that the first one didn't. Mm-hmm. So I, I see that happening a lot, shorter, shorter mm-hmm. print runs and printing more often. So it's almost like a pre-publication print um, to have. Right. And, and- I would call it an, an ARC, but because mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the purpose, but people use that for not only sales, but to build an audience for a bigger run and to, to um, for funds for a bigger run. Mm-hmm. And, and pre-set up and maybe and test up a little bit. And I, and I think that if you're going to go out with some of the reviews um, that I, I, I do know that in reviews, is that a lot of them will take manuscripts now versus having the real, the solid book for the review. Mm-hmm. That, um, but it is nice to be able to have that tightened together that you can start showing it. And, and, I, and I also think there is huge value in getting feedback from people, um, whether it, it again is for review or you're looking for endorsements or fill in the blank, is that if they really can visualize and see the book as it's going to be printed, to actually see it coming out as a book. Because you know, ebooks don't read like books anyway, because you can change the pages. I mean, that's why they don't have page numbers, because you change the size of the font. And, and a lot of times they're missing the graphics that will enrich a printed book has the enrichment. So, uh, Sandy, let me ask you, what's going on in the in the print industry? You know, you know I remember when ebooks came along and talking with a colleague and he says, oh, yeah, print books are going to totally disappear. And we had quite a dialogue over it. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I was in the other camp and I said, I don't think they're going to disappear. Well, I think that that people who like actual paper books are very loyal to those books. And uh, ebooks have their their people as well. Um, they may be more portable, portable. You can take five titles on your on your tablet to go on vacation instead of lugging books. But I think the people that love books really love books. And there have been studies that have shown that students using an actual real textbook retain more knowledge than those that use uh, e-textbooks. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's also an eye strain thing. Um, with e- e-books. So I think print books are not going away. In fact, print book sales are up and um, we're all very happy about that, but I don't see that happening. But something big in the book world are audiobooks. Audiobooks mm-hmm. are huge. Mm-hmm. I, I work for a book, book printer. I love printed books, but I love audiobooks. I mean, I, I have a long commute, and so I plug an audiobook in and listen to it both ways, and then traffic doesn't bother me so much. And so I'm a big consumer of audiobooks, mm-hmm. and, but I do love my print books. Well, you know, they're projecting that audiobooks will eclipse um, ebooks here within the next, within three years on the percentage of overall book sales. That's what's being projected from, from the ebook people. I mean, because ebooks have been flat for a long time. Mm-hmm. I've, in their I've, sales I've never growth. had an ebook and I've, I've never, I've never, I've never, I've never had one. Really can't really, can't really weigh in on it. Yeah, but, but it is for all of you, I've, you've heard me say this before, that it, that it doesn't matter what format you love, you and you prefer you need to be aware that there's millions of other people that like other formats and so you have to deliver it for them you have to uh give it to them so really take advantage of that on that all right so let, let's start, let's talk about um when you sit down uh with someone when you when someone comes in let's say they call you out of the blue um, they found your name or they see you on our website and they call you directly. Um, and uh, how do you talk to them about paper? There's so many different types of papers. Of course, if you look at print, print on demand, you get chocolate or vanilla um, mm-hmm. and you don't have the variation. So are, are there certain kind of papers, whether it's, can you talk about weight a little bit and, and talk about gloss and laminate and, and all those other kind of things? And you've mentioned matte, which I really love. Um, and and get into a little bit of that, Sandy, so we can kind of get some nitty gritty. Well, sure. For text paper, um, there's a lot of different kinds: white, and natural shade, and gloss coated, matte coated. So I usually ask people what their what their preference is. Some people like a natural shade or a cream color because it's um, said to have less eye strain, but some people like white because it's more contrast and said to be easier to read. So that's kind of a personal preference. But if somebody has a color on the inside, like a lot of color interior, Mm -hmm. I like to suggest either matte or gloss coated because the coating really helps pop the color. And um, I think that that's what people look for, um, coated papers are typically a little heavier and they may be thinner because they're very smooth and they've got that coating to make them, uh, but they're a little thinner, but they're um, very beautiful for color books, uh, children's books. Um, so I kind of kind of ask a lot of questions about what, what they have in mind, what's in their book, what do they envision. Um, if they have a book that they really love and they say, I love this paper. Can you get it? I'll ask them to let me borrow it. And then I'll check the paper and see if it's something that we have a house paper that's similar to and maybe send samples and, and let them check them out. Do a lot of journals. People always wonder what kind of paper should I use in my journal? And so I like to send uh, different, different samples out for that so they can write on them and see what writes best, what they what they prefer, they think their users would prefer. 
you know, for opacity too, that's the thing to think about. If you've got mm -hmm. a lot of ink on a page, you want a thicker or more opaque paper so that there's uh, no show through on the other side. So there's just a lot of questions, you know. Is there a certain way? Because I do notice that the uh, and it's and it's when we talk about weight. I mean, you're tuned into it. A lot of people don't think about weight. They just say that pages feel a little thicker or thinner, and that's going to be dealing with weight. Is that correct? Right. Well, often, often. sometimes there are thicker papers that are actually lighter because they're fluffy. They have more air in the fibers. Mm -hmm. So they're a little rougher, to, they're not as smooth, they feel a little more rough, but they've got more air in the fibers, so they're fluffed up and thicker, but maybe lighter. So it's a lot of, a lot of different options. Well, I think it's also important to say that I'm, th I'm thinking you, you absolutely have to have um, a heavier paper, like for children's books. Let's, think, let's talk about color right now, that you've got ch children's books. Um, that are that are going to have a lot of color, and it's certainly gift books with color almost bleed color, um, because there's so much of it. And it, is there a is there a certain type of paper that would be better for that kind of a book versus the regular um, just a black text, a, a novel, let's say, or a business book? Right for a children's book, I always recommend a hundred pound either matte or gloss depending on what the author prefers. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's pluses and minuses to each, each type of paper, but for a children's book, you want a hundred pound because you want it to be sturdy because kids' books get, especially well-loved kids' books, get a lot of wear and tear. A gift book, I would still, if it's, if those tend to be thinner. So because they're thinner, I always recommend a thicker paper just to give it more oomph. Mm -hmm. And also more perceived value. If you have a real thin paper and a real thin book, it might seem chintzy. So I, I like a thicker paper. And also, you know, we want it to be a certain width for certain or a certain thickness for certain binding styles. So that's going to play into it as well. But I like a nice 100-pound paper for thin books or for children's books. All right. So when you talk about mat. Um, and, and we got one minute here before we get to our final break here. But matte is going to be duller. I mean, everyone needs to get that in their head. It's a little bit duller than the gloss, correct? Yes, yes. It's going to, uh, and it may, it may knock the color down a little bit. It might not be quite as vibrant on the matte paper as it would on the gloss paper. But it, it, it's, it's very nice look as well. But it, is, it does have that coating. So it's going to make the ink look nice. It just may not be quite as vibrant as it might be on gloss paper. For a journal, and you're having color inside, it might be just perfect because they're writing in it. Otherwise, you go to the gloss, especially with kids. You is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. 
Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We of course offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1 800 465 5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Riles. We're talking for me today with me, Sandy Gould. She is with Color House Graphics, and that I, you know, it's one of, it's one of the companies I've always recommended. Uh, they they stand behind their their word. I know one time I had a just something came out quirky, and they immediately took care of it, reprinted it for the client, um, and recognized it. it. It came from their side, so I thought that was pretty terrific. Sandy, it can be reached at Sandy at ColorHouseGraphics.com. She is up in the polar vortex part of the country, <laughs> late in Michigan. And there's a lot of printers up in the Michigan area. We usually, we always call them the Michigan Mafia, but they're up there. Um, and they're, I guess, I, is there a reason how all the print, there was so many, so much printing going on, Sandy, in Michigan? Do you know? <laughs> I think it all started with University of Michigan and railroads. Ah, oh, got it, got it. And and you know, I mentioned earlier. I was kind of guessing how many printers, uh, uh, sort of full blown book binders, manufacturers were in the in the North America. Do you know any numbers? Because I, I know. I don't if, know. You don't. I don't okay. know, but I know that that the numbers are decreasing, and it's sad because um, every year we hear of. Other printers, I mean, well-established printers closing. Um, there have been several big mergers mm-hmm. as well over the last few years. But, um, yeah, Color House, we just, we've been here, what, 32 years now? Mm-hmm. And all we do is print and bind. So um, um, we're, we're doing well, and we're having a very happy that we're having um we're we're still here and doing well and um have i think a lot to offer offer um independent publishers and authors we we have a lot of love for indies and for and for authors we that's my area of expertise who i deal with so um if you call to color house and you haven't worked with anybody before and it's your first time then you'll likely be directed to me and um I really enjoy it. It's fun for me because yeah. I get a little get to jump on that little wild roller coaster ride and see the ups and hopefully no downs. But um, it's fun for me. So yeah, well, well and and um, and and it is exciting. It is exciting to get that long. I you you all did a book for me. It's one of my favorite books. It's called Snappy Sassy Salty, and it's a, a four by six book it's uh, got a dust jacket on it it's it's got 250 of my own quotes in it and it's I've had people actually uh, one person pulled out the pages literally and he had them pasted and I said oh for heaven's sakes I'm, I'm I, I am mailing you another book I, I just said give me your address I'm sending you another book um, on it but it, it's it's a beautiful beautiful book and it's got a ribbon in it that you can put in a little very thin little purple ribbon and it's in and and the pages are not smooth um there and, and you want to talk about that technique that we use sandy um yes that's called a faux decal edge 
and mm -hmm. um, it's available only for offset books. It can't be done on digital. Right. So um, runs is 500 for us, 500 or more. Um, it's a little more expensive because there's a lot more waste and there are certain, um, it has to be done in even signatures. So um, page count is something we should talk about if that's something that you want. Um, but yeah, it's a very unique look. Um, we have several authors that use those, uh, use that exclusively on their books. Takes a little bit longer. Um, yeah. It goes a little bit slower through the folder. So um, timeline is something we should talk about if that's something you're interested in too. Well, yeah, it is. I love it. I mean, actually, I'm holding it while I'm talking to you right now. I, I <laughs> love the whole presentation. And this book has got a more of a natural cream color. And, you know, Sandy was talking about that. I will make a recommendation. If you're doing a business book um, that I would be doing, your nonfiction, I would be doing more of a white color. The, the, the type of paper is different. Sandy's mentioned many times about the different types of papers that you can choose from. And there is a different feel to a lot of them. So I, I think it's a great idea if they're willing to share samples that you get a few samples so you can get in, uh, you know, really uh, there's a richness to it. Um, and then for a lot of, a lot of other books like novels and, and though are, that those will go directly into more of a, the natural color. And so this is a quote book and it could have gone either way, but I, th I chose to go with the, the lighter um, on it. So that's my two bits there. Sandy, can, can you talk about printing time? I think that's important. People need to understand that it's not something that you put in and you're going to have it next week when you do an offset print run. Right. Um, right. Offset print runs can vary between two and four weeks, depending on what time of year and how busy we happen to be. Um, in the in the winter months, January, February, maybe into March, we're not quite as busy, so it can be a little bit quicker and turnaround times. Um, as we get through the summer and early fall, that's our busiest time, so things may take a little bit longer. Um, first, that's for a soft cover book. For a hard cover book, it's usually about two weeks longer. And uh, sewing, if you have a sewn hard cover, that can be even three weeks because longer because that's a slower process. Um, mm -hmm. We also do coil binding, and um, that's, that's a little bit longer than a soft cover book because there's more processes involved. But... Um, it, it varies so much, so it's good. It's another good thing to talk about with your printer early on. If you need to have a book in your hands by a certain time, and binding style may play into that. Mm -hmm. so that's good. A good thing to talk about. And um, I, I always tell people it's gonna. I just it's gonna be at least a month. That's <laughs> funny, but it goes up because at least a month. That leaves time for corrections, you know. And we kind of build our turnaround times on. No corrections, no PDF proofs, and if you do hard copy proofs, that takes a couple extra days. And if you have corrections, then you know you're you're not starting over at the beginning, but it is going to set things back a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to go back to what I start with. When you get your proofs, you get 24 hours. <laughs> Turn them, clear your tape, clear it, and just get it done. And you are. Um, I, in the old days, Sandy, I can remember I got a book back. This is when I was publishing with New York. And my, this is the old plate day, the old days where we used to get every. It, no, there was nothing digital. It was not a digital world at all. And we everything was going, goes back and forth in paper. And then a typesetter actually retyped the book. Do you remember those days? Oh, maybe yeah. maybe oh, before yeah. your time? That was That was in the 80s. Well, I started in printing, I think, in 97. Uh, all right. So my first, yeah, my first book came out in 81. And everything went back and forth. And then they actually retyped your book um, when all the corrections in, you know, so you have this other animal in play. Um, and so it, it was just a different, totally different game. It's so different. It's so fabulous now. Um, I can't think of a better time to be an author. Um, and getting things because of the tools 
um, and that we can work with high quality um, uh, publishing service providers like Color House Graphics to really move things on out. So um, it makes a difference. So understand everyone, you should pl- just budget in uh, a month and offset and maybe Sandy, it would be a good idea to, to tell them the difference between print on demand and offset printing. Well, print on demand is true print on demand is typically you order one book, one book gets printed. That's not something that's a good fit for us. We start our minimums for our soft cover at 25, which still isn't mm-hmm. very many. So it's still very um, doable for most people. Um, even if you're just trying to get a few out there to get reviews and, and that kind of thing. But um, we do high quality digital print. We are very work very hard to make sure our digital and offset match. So if you do a run of 100 now and come back in a few months and need a thousand, that they're going to look the same. And there's going to be no no discernible difference between the print quality. We use the same papers for the most part. There are some papers that are too thin to run well in a digital press that we don't offer. But um, for the most part, um, we use the same paper. Everything's the same quality. We use do many, many tests to make sure that everything is calibrated together and it, and it looks, looks the same either way. Mm-hmm. So um, for us, our best fit is t- around 500 is, is the tipping point. And it depends on what your page count is, whether it's color, black and white, and what your trim size is. There are a few things that play into that, but right around 500 for most books, it's, it's a little cheaper to go offset than digital. But if you need 500 and you need them a week faster, digital is a faster, a faster process. So yeah, but um, do you do you sew the digital? You don't sew the digital. You glue that. Is that correct? Right. Um, sewing is done at the fold of signatures. So <laughs> there's no folding in digital. It's all done in single sheets. So you can't really do smite sewing you can do side sewing which is where for very thin books like children's books where the sewing is done about a quarter inch into the edge of the page Mm -hmm. so that can be done um but uh smite sewing is for offset only all right well now we've we've had a mini course in printing (laughs) so just to wrap up in these last few seconds that you want to use someone who is then around um, and this is what they do. This is what the business. That's why you want to look, work with a bindery and a book manufacturer. You want to make sure you have your book edited. You want to make sure, in my opinion, you have a professional book designer in play so that when files go to a printer like Colorhouse Graphics, that they know that they're going to be in the right file, in the right format, in the right shape. How's that? Does that wrap that up, Sandy? That sounds great. That sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful to talk about printing. It's a big Thank you. Of mine. I, I... Uh, great. All right. Thank you. All right, Shady. 